But good morning and a very warm welcome to our parish Eucharist. And our opening hymn this morning is Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. also with you. And we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to call to mind those ways in which we have turned away from God in the past week. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confirm our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's command, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you an eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen and our collect for this morning almighty and everlasting god increase in us your gift of faith that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who, alive, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our gradual hymn this morning is Jesus Calls Us O'er the Turn.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then he said to the slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite every one you find to the wedding banquet. The slaves went out into the streets, and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but through few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember a number of years ago I had a church history tutor who delighted in saying the most outrageous things. He was funny, he was sometimes offensive, he was challenging, and after a particularly outrageous comment, he would often look at us and say, you know I'm giving you a hyperbole, and if you quote me outside this class, I'll certainly deny it all. And that was his way of telling us not to take what he said literally, but to take it seriously. It was also his way of getting us to look beyond factual history and to see a deeper truth. He was challenging our preconceived ideas and expectations so that we might see something new, hear something new, think something new, and perhaps ultimately become something new. I wonder if that's what Jesus is doing in today's Gospel. You see, this parable of the king's son's wedding is so outrageous, so shocking, that I think it begs to be taken seriously, but not literally. I've also no doubt that this is a parable of judgment, but I wonder if it's the judgment we think it is. So let's have a look and see. Speaking about the first group of guests, the king says, those invited were not worthy. And so I guess, by implication, those in the second group were worthy. I don't know about you, but I tend to get a bit nervous and fearful when God begins to make judgments. It usually leaves me wondering whether I'm in the first group or the second group. Am I worthy or am I not? But I do also suspect that our nervousness, my nervousness and fear about God's judgment arise from the assumption that he judges us in the same way that we so often judge others. Because isn't it true that more often than not, our judgments of others are judgments of exclusion? But what if it's just the opposite with God? What if Jesus is trying to shock us into seeing that the kingdom of heaven is not actually business as usual? What if God's judgment in our lives is actually one of grace and acceptance and invitation? In other words, a judgment of inclusion. 
But if that is true, then what separates or distinguishes the first invited guests from the second? The difference certainly isn't that one was more deserving than the other. The first invited guests were all the recipients of the king's invitation and favour. But then so were the second guests. And in fact, so was the man who showed, us, showed up without a wedding robe. They had all been invited. They were all favoured. None of them had done anything to earn or deserve an invitation. It was just given to them. And if, it, and if that's true for them, perhaps it's true for us as well. Neither is the difference about the king liking one group more than the other. No, his sole motivation is to share his banquet. He wants someone, anyone, everyone to join in his joy and celebration and to be part of his kingdom and life. Both groups were given the same opportunity. Again, if that's true for them, is it also true for us? Nor is the difference that some guests are good and others are bad. To the contrary, with the second round of invitation, the king sends his servants into the main street with the instruction to invite everyone you find. And they did. They went out into the streets and gathered all who they found, both good and bad. If that's true for them, is it true for us? That's probably not the kind of social life most of us live or offer or in fact receive from another. But this parable is talking about the kingdom of God, not ours. So what is it? What's the difference between those who were worthy and those who were not? Well, I think there's actually only one thing that distinguishes the first invited guests from the second, and that is presence. You see, the second invited guests were the ones who showed up, and that's the only difference between the two groups that I can see. One lot showed up, and the other didn't. Can we then perhaps conclude from this parable that the key to our life in God is that we need to be present? It sounds just so easy, doesn't it? But think how difficult it can be to be present to another person. It means establishing the other person as our priority. It means seeing them for who they are and not who we want them to be. It means really listening to what they say and not just listening to what we want to hear. It means letting go of our own agendas, distractions, fears and prejudices. It means bringing and offering all that we are and all that we have. And if we're not doing that with others, we're probably not doing it with God. Didn't Jesus say, what you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, you do also for me? To show up and be present is to be worthy before God. It's that simple and it's that difficult. We don't earn or prove our worthiness as a prerequisite to entering the banquet. We just show up, be present and discover ourselves and the worthiness that is bestowed upon each of us. And that's when our lives begin to change. But what about the man who showed up without a wedding robe? Not only was he wearing the wrong thing, we are also told that he was speechless. It was as if he wasn't really there. Jesus is reminding us that these are times when we show up, but we're not really present. But what if this man had said something, anything? What if he had just made his presence known? Not so much to the king, but actually to himself. What if he had said, I was hungry, I smell food. I trusted you to feed me. I was lonely, I saw the lights on. I trusted you to take me in. I was thirsty, I knew there would be wine. I trusted you to give me a drink. I was naked, I knew people would be well dressed. I trusted you to clothe me. I was sad and grieving, I heard music and laughter. I trusted you to share your joy. I was empty, I saw abundance, and I trusted you to fill me. I was dying, I saw the door open, and I trusted you to give me life. What if he had said any one of those or a thousand other things like them? It would have been enough. He would have shown up with all that he was and all that he had. He would have been present. Then the king would have said to him, Oh, my dear friend, I'm so 
glad, so very glad you got my invitation. And I'm so very glad that you are here. You are worthy. And if that's true for him, then it's true for us too. Amen. And so we say together our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us draw near to our just, merciful and loving God, and pour out our concerns for the Church and the world. Lord, in your abundant love, hear our prayer. The powerful influences of our world distract us and lead us away from your truth. We pray that the quiet whisper of your wisdom may be heard and acknowledged through the noise of our lives. Speak through our prejudices, helping us to celebrate what we share and to respect our differences and help us to be more open to your will for us. May the world and its leaders find a new openness to your generosity of spirit and love, a new openness to honesty and empathy in their positions of leadership and trust. Lord, in your abundant love, hear mm -hmm. our prayer. In our parish, we thank you for the ministry of Ruth as she retires, and of Helen helping us through the period of our vacancy. And we pray especially this month for the church wardens and the parish representatives of the wider team ministry, who have the responsibility of using their prayerful discernment to choose a new team rector to guide us with our mission through the years ahead. Lord, in your abundant love, Hear our prayer. Father, may our homes and daily schedules be part of the territory of your kingdom, where it is your will which guides us and your love which rules. We pray today, especially for Miranda and Charlie, who were married here yesterday. We pray for Sarah being licensed as a lay minister this weekend. And we remember in our prayers the people of Gresham Road and Place and the road steward, Sophie McTavish. Lord, in your abundant love, hear mm. our prayer. Lord, we are so sorry for our failures in caring for creation, and we pray for the strength and will to do all we can to combat our excesses and work for the restoration and protection of our environment. Lord, in your abundant love, we grieve for the cruelty and unfairness of suffering and disease, and we kneel alongside all in pain and weep with them. Comfort and heal with your love all those who suffer in any way, in mind, body or spirit, and give us all the grace to bear our sufferings. We remember especially Diane, Jean, Baby Henry and Pat. And all those who struggle with the mental and physical effects of this pandemic. Lord, in your abundant love, hear our prayer. Father, as death takes from us those we love and we find it hard to live without them, we thank you for their lives. We commend them to your keeping and we pray especially for those whose depth of love makes the pain of loss the harder to bear. This week we pray for the family and friends of Richard Walden and Frank Weeks. 
Lord, in your abundant love, hear mm. our prayer. It is the greatest of honours to be invited to your wedding banquet. Help us all to be worthy of your calling. Lord of life, hear mm. our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. And so for our peace, God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so in our hearts and minds we now offer one another a sign of the peace. right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. For the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Our communion hymn this morning has gathered around for the table is spread, sung by the contra -Covids. Feast, 
For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given, when we shall feast at that table, where you reign with all your saints forever. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so for our notices, first of all a very big thank you to everybody who donated uh, for Harvest last Sunday. The food has been duly dispatched to Brixton, to their food bank, uh, and a donation will be made to WaterAid. I have spent quite a lot of time uh, over the last couple of weeks up at Lymphsfield Infant School um, and I do know that they are fairly light on governors up there. That is, I believe, part of the ministry of our church to support that school um, and I'm just putting uh, a request out to any of you who may wish to consider uh, being a governor either to get in touch with uh, Cheryl, the head teacher up there, or perhaps to speak to me. Um, our very own Sarah Paxton is going to be licensed this evening uh, at six o'clock in Southwark Cathedral. There's a link on this notice sheet if you would like to join in with the service, and I'm very much looking forward to going up there uh, to be with her. And lastly, don't forget that our All Souls service is at 4pm on the 1st of November. Again, it will be a stream service, but if there's anybody you would like to remember specifically, then do please be in touch with Caroline in the office. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge 
and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those that you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. And so let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.